17. Okay. So he says, and to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, mm -hmm. yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith, even the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, mm -hmm. who taught Balaam to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, mm -hmm. so that they might eat food, sacrifice to idols, and practice sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. So also you have some who hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Mm -hmm. Therefore repent, if not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. Mm -hmm. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I'll give him a white stone with a mm -hmm. new name written mm -hmm. on the stone that no one knows except mm -hmm. the one who receives it. Mm -hmm. wow. So let's talk a little bit about the history of, of this church Pergamon. And uh, Pastor, maybe Matt, I could start with you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you. You know, can you give us a little bit sure. of, of history, you know, uh, uh, just a summary yeah. of what he means here that you're right in the middle of Satan's throne, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, outside of Athens, uh, Pergamum was the administrative center of the, the empire and and it was the capital city of Asia Minor and it, it is a place that in some senses was very prosperous very exciting the buildings the monuments it's, it's all very interesting but at the other side very dark at the same time uh, here you have uh, what's referred to in uh, this this uh, passage as Satan's throne, mm -hmm. a place where he found, mm -hmm. felt very much at home mm -hmm. in Pergamum. Uh, here you have a, a temple to the, the, the chief of the gods, Zeus. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have many, many pagan worship centers. In fact, um, the people of Pergamum were called by others in, in the region, the, the temple keepers of Asia. And there were also three temples that they had there that were dedicated to the worship of the Roman emperor. So uh, not only that, but one of the other things that they were very well known for was a temple of healing mm -hmm. where people would go there and spend the night and they would have these non-poisonous snakes slither all over them. What a sign of Satan. You know, what a sign of Satan. Mm -hmm. And there would be demonic wonders. There would be anything from mud baths to major surgeries done there. And often these people would have dreams, demonic dreams. And so this was a very, very, very dark place and, and such a need for um, a church here. And yet this church was, was compromised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything that you see here, Pastor? And that is thingly, this church was called uh, a compromising church. Uh, you have just said that uh, they also practice healing. And so uh, the, there is even that dreams that, uh, you know, uh, they thought it is spiritual things, but no, it is a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. uh, you have said that uh, Pergamon is the place where in uh, it became a powerful center of politics even for 250 years. Mm -hmm. You can imagine the influence to, to, to the world. However, the church was noted to be a compromising church. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it is also true that uh, in a main city where we are in, uh, you know, in every case it is in the world, uh, this is a great warning to uh, our churches because we might as well be influenced by those power, mm -hmm. political power or prosperity of that land. And we thought we are doing well 
for the Lord. Uh, it is somewhat a message. We were, we're talking about what's, what God is uh, telling us today. So. Yeah. And so it's a somewhat a, a kind of warning if uh, we are located in those kind of cities. Well, how, how can we relate that today? I mean, you know, it, it's a, you know, the history you gave here of what was happening there. Mm -hmm. uh, how could we move that to the 21st century? And mm -hmm. what are yes. similar things that, that we would say that, uh, you know, would, would be things that compromise or things that would that we would see false worship in that. What, what are some of the things that we see in the church today that we might say that, hey, you know what, Jesus saying these things to us today because here's what's happening today in the church hmm. with what? Yeah, there are many churches today who are really feel for or they doesn't like to deal with sin. They just, they just want to preach something that pleases people, to attract people, well in fact, uh, uh, we, we are even uh, uh, listening to some churches that they are so sensitive not to somewhat rebuke those things but you know they just want to share the love yes the love of God but also the love of God should also exposes our weaknesses in the sin that needs to be leads to repentance hmm. yeah what do you see pastor uh, Matt I mean as far as yeah similar things that you know we now well here we're in the 21st century. If Jesus were to speak to us, <laughs> these very things that mm -hmm. he's speaking of back then, what, what are some things he would say to us today? You know, I think he'd write a, a very similar letter. You, you know, two things are named. One is explicit, one is implicit. One that explicit is, you know, the, the, the false teaching of, of Balaam when before the children of Israel entered into the, 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 the promised land, when they were having victories over these kings, uh, uh, they got to the place of Baal Peor and they were deceived by Balaam and they entered into, for the first time, Baal worship uh, as far as, as they were entering into the promised land. I know they, they made a, a, you know, a, a golden calf even earlier than that. Mm -hmm, right. but, but still, um, this was where they actually entered into fornication and there there is uh, sexual deviance being um, excused and even promoted in the churches today in in a very subtle way uh, through the uh, kind of um, sentiment of tolerance there there is all kinds of confusion as to um, what conversion looks like and and there is this kind of idea that there's some people that will never have victory over their sin so we just need to accept them whether it's the gender issues or the mm -hmm. homosexuality i've even seen christians compromise on the abortion issue so there's all kinds of compromise we're out of this kind of twisted understanding of tolerance and compassion which we do have all the compassion in the world for sinners whatever stripe they are we're all sinners we need christ yeah so so am i am i right in what you two just shared right here, uh, I could summarize this from, from my perspective, mm -hmm. from a layman's perspective, is that that there are things happening in the church today that we have, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Jesus said, you left your first love. Mm -hmm. And when you leave your first love, the next thing you start happening is you mentioned mm -hmm. compromising. Mm -hmm. And you could basically say that this was a compromising church. church yes. They were allowing uh, other doctrines into the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That they were actually involved in immorality. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, and yeah. so I, I think that says to us, if, if Jesus is saying something to us today, is that what is he saying to us about our churches today? Are yeah. we compromising? The mm -hmm. truth, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, are we are we trying to take uh, scripture and take a little part out of it mm -hmm. and say that, well, see, Jesus loves all people, so we we have to accept right. them all. Now, mm -hmm. I, I believe that Jesus loves all he people. Is. Indeed, right. he does. But I don't. I sure. I'm a strong yeah. believer that we need to hold to the truths. Yeah. And and let's call sin sin. Amen. And 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 let's be holy like he asks us to be holy. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm kind of hearing that from you guys and saying that yes. if you see this and if Jesus were to say to us today, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we've got some issues today that, yes. that we're not we're not really uh, holding to the yeah. truths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, one of the things that happened, I know that in the story of, of Balaam is that 
one way that he got Israel a stumbling block yes. was that they took uh, the foreign ladies of the land or the right. ladies of that land yeah. and mm -hmm. made them look adorable to the Israelites. Yeah. Yeah. And they were they compromised yeah. and they were told not to intermingle, uh, intermingle uh, with the uh, foreign ladies because yes. of their worship of foreign gods. Yes. And, and so that was what, what Balaam was trying to do and, and mm -hmm. entice Israel's men to, mm, to take right. these women that's right. and take them in her homes and marry them. Yeah. And, and then eventually, we know what happened in the history. Yeah. So is they, they basically turned away from God. And yeah, God's greatest right. yeah. judgment yeah, yeah. was the fact that they mm -hmm. served other gods. That's right. You know, right. Yeah. you want to add to that at well, all? Well, yeah. I, I, and, and, you know, I, I love, this is, there's a, that's the, whoa, that's the wake up call. It's the dark yes. side. But there, there, here's the hopeful side. He calls it a doctrinal problem, not a behavioral problem. When we get our eyes fixed on Jesus, this problem, whether it's pe people dealing with pornography, mm -hmm. uh, these kind of uh, sexual deviant things, uh, God gives us hope. And, and that's where I think the doctrinal part is. It's in the understanding of, first of all, conversion, that when we are saved, we receive the Holy Spirit. We're not perfected overnight, but we have all the power that we need to Amen. say no to sin and to defeat sin and to reckon it as dead in our yes. life. And that goes right into the doctrine of sanctification. So there's hope if we just turn our eyes upon Jesus. It's it's not, it is that simple, I, it, but you need accountability and all of that. But the word of God and Christ dwelling in you by faith through the Holy Spirit is what we need. And once we understand that, we can truly uh, get rid of this false doctrine of impotent Christians, powerless Christians who, who just make excuses and never really change and transform into the image of Christ. What, what do you see back in, in, uh, in your land, in the Philippines, that kind of represent the world? I mean, we, we know in America might be a little different. We're so affluent right here. Mm -hmm. And there's a real danger here that, you know, that uh, because of our affluence is that we, we kind of think, well, God's blessing us. We could do these things. Yeah. You know? yeah. But do you see the same yeah. issues back in the, in the Philippines with the church? Generally, it's the same, but uh, something that I observed, uh, like Philippines and other countries, uh, who are not well economically is the... There was uh, a temptation compromising using material things. So it's we got a, what we talked about yesterday, love not the world. Yes, yes. You know, because the, the world will cause us to mm. compromise. If mm. you become a friend of the world, you become yeah. an enemy of God. Enemy of God. Right? Yeah, you're, I mean, you're that's says. You're hostile to God. Right. Well, let's, let's move on. I, I want to, you know, so the flaws that we see right here, we've kind of talked about compromising church, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're not holding to the doctrines of truth. Their behavior is, mm -hmm. they're looking more like the world yeah. than they are Christians. Mm -hmm. You think that's a problem today? <laughs> yes, many yes. Uh, yes. compromised and embrace the pleasure of this world. You know, I'm going to say this, uh, you, know, you know, even in our land, mm -hmm. they say the divorce rate mm -hmm. is just as high for the Christian as the non-Christian. Something yeah. drastically yeah. wrong mm -hmm. when, when, when we see things like that. Mm -hmm. And and, I, and I, I'm going to say this, Pastor, you mentioned about abortion. Yeah. If, if there's one sin that this nation mm -hmm. really is, is uh, it's terrible. You know, that, you know, what hurt me more than anything else was what earlier in this year when one of the states had a vote yeah. for full term. Abortion. abortion that a, uh, a woman could actually yeah. give hold the baby for nine months mm -hmm. and have that baby be born and decide I don't want it and they leave it because she said I don't want it and they wow. let that baby die. Yeah. Just and, because and when it that, doesn't and, like. and this and, and this is general assembly of this state, when That's that right. happened, there was clear there was clapping and cheering like wow. they had a great victory. And and, and at that time it was like Boy, they put a knife in my hand. I thought, Lord, shame on us. Mm, yes. You know, and then we wonder why we're being afflicted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything you want to add to that, brother? Yeah, we are. We are as a church in the Philippines. We fought against those uh, proposed bill right. against that, and praise God, it was not 
Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Approve. So praise and, the Lord. We praise God for that. Okay, let's, uh, Pastor, I'd like you to read uh, verse 16, and I'd like you to kind of talk a little bit about the warning that, that Jesus is okay. giving here. Therefore, repent. If not, I will come against you quickly and make war against those people with the swords of my mouth. Yeah. So, um, you know, earlier I said there, there was a message that was explicit. There was also one that is implicit. Mm -hmm. And um, part of the repentance that this yes. church needs to experience is one of paying the price. Mm -hmm. And he, he says earlier in, in verse uh, 13, he says, he's, com he's commending them, yet you hold fast my name and you did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Again, there's that seed of Satan, the, the very uh, place that is preserved, uh, this, this, uh, this, this um, throne, this pagan altar to Zeus was, was actually captured by the Germans uh, and brought over to Germany. Um, and it's still there today, but there, there was a bull god that they had and they would set it on fire and that's where they put Antipas. He had a mm -hmm. reputation of prayer. He was willing to pay the price. Yes. And e even there, there are um, stories of that time outside of the scripture, but stories of people who uh, recorded the, the fact that um, people would go into this healing center in Pergamum uh, where the snakes would crawl over them and, and they would have these dreams. And the demons were telling uh, these people, uh, get rid of Antipas. He is driving us out of the city through mm -hmm. his prayers. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I believe that the core of the compromise in this church and that what they needed to repent of is a, 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 a kind of a, they didn't have thick skin. They didn't want to pay the price. They didn't want to suffer. They saw what happened to Antipas. When mm -hmm. you really get on fire for God, right. you are going to suffer. Right. And they, they didn't want to pay that price. So I, I think they do need to repent doctrinally, but also I think in our spirits, we need to repent of a kind of unwillingness to suffer. Well, one thing he says here is that, that he will war against them mm -hmm. if they don't repent. Yeah. It, you know, so... Do you, you really believe that God would war against us, in a mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did he do that in the Old Testament? Yeah, he did. And I think when he says that, he's, he's dividing the sheep from the goats. You know, um, there's different soils in, in, uh, of our heart. And uh, there are, everyone, just going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Just like going to McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger. <laughs> there has to be a... a an experience of regeneration by the Holy Spirit. There has to be an experience of repentance and faith where you forsake your life and you put your faith in Jesus. And so, yeah, he's going to war against anyone who is under the preaching of the word of God who hasn't truly repented. And if, if this is talking about Christians, it's certainly not about condemning Christians because there's no condemnation. But... <laughs> But there may Chastite. be serious discipline. Right, right. There may be even death. He may take a Christian home early if they don't repent. Right. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that God's, uh, his sentiment towards all of his dear ones is always out of love and mercy, even if he has to take us home. But as far as war, God is at war with unbelievers, even if they're sitting in a church, especially if they're sitting in a church. Some Puritans said, um, the same sun that softens the wax hardens the clay. Hmm. And so some people who are hearing the word of God in the churches, they don't respond to it. In instead of getting soft, they get harder and harder. And mm -hmm. Jesus is going to war with a double-edged sword. The truth is going to come out one day. And that, that's definitely going to happen. So, so Pastor yeah. Tim, I'd like you to read verse 17. And, and let's talk a little bit about the remedy for for this you know, mm -hmm. compromising you know the one who was an ear had better hear from the spirit says to the churches to the one who conquers i will give him some of the hidden manna and i will give him a white stone and on that stone 
will be written a new name that no one can understand except the one who receives it. New name. <laughs> it's a good sort of word. <laughs> so how, what do you see that in that passage of what the Lord is saying to us? There's always a reward of faithfulness. Just like he did mention about Antipas who uh, modeled this uh, strong faith, prayerful living, mm -hmm. though he was persecuted and ended up uh, dying, but he has that good reputation in, uh, in this uh, particular chapter. He, he was mentioned as faithful, mm -hmm. faithful till death. And so, and verse 17 tells us that God is a reward. God will reward the conquerors, the one who conquers. And it says here, I will give him some of the hidden mana, mm -hmm. sustenance, and I will give him a white stone. And on that stone, his name is Raven. You might want to add on that. <laughs> I love it because those two items uh, are, are directly speaking of spiritual intimacy. Yes. I'm, you know, it's kind of like we hear in, in another passage in these letters where he's knocking on the door and he wants to come in and have a meal with us. That's what this man is about. When, when we are faithful, yes, we're going to suffer in the world. Yes, we're going we're gonna, to, it's going to hurt, but mm. the Lord will heal us. He will sustain us. He will bring us that spiritual intimacy where he has a name for us. Amen. And it's written on a white stone. Listen, I'm justified in Jesus and the Amen. righteousness of Christ. And, and there's this, I don't know what this, this name means, outside of the fact that, you know, when we, when we love someone, we, we, we know them personally. Well, one, one, uh, one interpretation I heard on the yeah. white stone given to you is yeah. that during those times of mm -hmm. Olympic Games and that, mm -hmm. yeah. is that if you were a victor, mm -hmm you were given a white stone with your name on it, and that gave you the permission to go into the celebration mm -hmm. and, and be honored as the one who was the victor. And wow. Nobody could go into this wow. certain area of celebration mm -hmm. without their name being on that stone. Wow, Isn't that cool? yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So that's, that's what we, but, I, but before we do that, before we kind of close here, I, I do yeah. want to point out one thing, because I think this is, so important yep. to what we're why we're even meeting together like this why what why do we feel that that uh, we want to share the word of god so that mm -hmm. god has a has a word for us mm -hmm. and, and it's really key in this where he says in verse 17 he who has yeah an ear yeah yeah and my my dear brother and sisters mm -hmm. uh, this is so important mm -hmm. you know is your heart open is your spiritual ears open? Mm. The, the things that we've been discussing and the things that, that, that we're pointing out here of what Jesus is saying to us, do you have an ear? Are you listening? Because if we're not listening, I mean, again, we could say, well, I went to church Sunday and I heard a message and tickled my ears for a little bit, but then I'm right back to where I was. Mm. If, if we go through this affliction and if it doesn't do what god called us yeah. to do we're going to miss out mm -hmm. on these very things the, mm -hmm. that he promises mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. yeah. and, and one of the one of the things for all of us as, as you as a brother or sister or us mm -hmm. is how we desire to honor our lord yeah. in worship yes. our lives are, are a, a worship to him and, and I, I want to be with all of you, and I want to hear the Lord say to each one of us, one. Well done. Well done. Well done. Good, Good and faithful, faithful servant. 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 So yeah. in, in conclusion, I, I'd like to give a final comment for each one of you brothers, and then I'll go ahead yeah. and close this on prayer. For, first, I would like to uh, just say this. What, what are the Antipas in this yes. generation? Are we willing to become an and they pass in this generation who is faithful, prayerful, pursuing the righteousness of God mm. amidst of different situations, amidst of compromising the body of Christ or believers in their faith. Are we like Antipas, who is willing to stand, be persistent in our prayer life, bringing our bring the the, the war in, in our knees and 
just allow the spirit to destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. I believe that the reason why they killed Antipa is just because in the spiritual realm, the power of his prayer, the, 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 his prayer life, his faithfulness is destroying the world.